everybody. This is one of my favorite times of year. On top of the holidays and all the lights up everywhere, I love the promise of a new year. Which brings us to our topic for today, which is how to set New Year's goals and make them reality. Because it all comes down to your actions and what you do on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis to get you to your goal. There's a great quote that I think summarizes this, which is, a dream written down becomes a goal. A goal broken down becomes a plan. A plan backed by actions makes your dreams reality. I don't know who said that, but I think that that summarizes exactly what we're talking about today. That is how we make goals into reality, dreams into reality. It comes down to our actions. Another quote for you. Well, I'll churn out some quotes to get you on the same page as me. The key to growth is to learn to make promises and to keep them. Again, it all comes back to small daily promises to ourselves, small daily goals. It's not about setting big monumental goals. And I think that this is something I've certainly learned over the years as I've learned how to make better goals, even why I call them goals and not resolutions. It is great to work with a vision for your life, for the year. These are great things, and I think that they really help guide us. And when we check in with them and we realize, oh, hey, wait, that vision for my life doesn't even line up with who I am today anymore. I got to change that. I got to figure out what my new vision is and what, you know, really defines a fulfilled, purposeful, meaningful life for me, which is a great exercise. And I highly recommend that. I will even do a podcast episode in the coming months, perhaps, about a concept called Memento Mori, which is an essentially, it's a practice of defining yourself and your life, starting from your death, how you want to be remembered by, what you wanted to do in your life, all that kind of stuff, and working backwards from there. Again, one thing I definitely learned that was a game changer was working backwards from our dream, from our goal, that is how we break it down into steps. Okay, this is my dream. Then this is the step that gets me to the dream. This is the step that gets me there. This is the step that gets me there all the way back to where I am today and what I can do today. Because it's, again, it's not about setting these huge monumental goals because those are overwhelming and seemingly unachievable with our daily action. But when we break it down into the smallest daily promises we can hold ourselves accountable we can use our free time to get us closer to achieving that goal to making that dream a reality and the last quote for our little introduction here if not me who if not now when to me it's always been as simple as that and i think that 2013 going into 2014 really marked a point in my life where For a few years, I had known what that quote meant. If not me, who? If not now, when? At the end of 2013, I think I kind of said, right. If not me, who? If not now, when? That perhaps was when I really realized this is up to me. It starts with me. It ends with me. And I am going to be the only deciding factor in my life. And I think that that is something I have learned and internalized over and over again over the years. And I know I spoke about this in previous podcast episode, you know, taking an active, accountable role in my healing and understanding my patterns of behaviors that no longer serve me. And accountability and responsibility is such a big factor in this because something I had to realize, I think, in 
the end of 2013, if I don't like the page of the book I'm on, I can turn the page. If I don't like the book I'm reading, I can change the book. No one else is going to turn the page for me. No one else is going to give me a new book to read. And if I continue to wait for someone or something to change the page, to change the book, to save me in that sense, well, gosh, I'll be waiting my whole life. So I think that that was something that really just clicked and changed. And I think for me and perhaps for a lot of people, it comes at a pinnacle of being fed up with yourself and your excuses and the page of the book that you're on. Perhaps it's not for everyone. And I think one of my biggest goals with Reself and its mission and its vision is introducing all of this stuff to people before it has to get to that point because I don't think it has to get to that point because again I wonder how we would be as people as you know a community if we learned this at such a young age just some food for thought I started a tradition with myself in 2014 when I was let's see 14 I was 17. Yeah. <laughs> right? Maybe 16. I would have been 16, turning 17 that year. Every year I write the number of resolutions that goes with the year end date. So in 2014, I wrote 14 resolutions. And now in 2021, I will be writing 21 resolutions. It sounds like a lot, but it's really not. Uh, they come pretty easily when you sit down to think about it. And I've learned a lot along the way doing uh, this for so many years. Let's see, 2014, 2026, 7. So I've been doing this for seven years, which is nuts. This is the first time I've stopped to consider that. And that's pretty crazy and it's pretty cool. And I definitely would equate it to a factor in my growth process for sure there is something about writing down your goals sticking with them checking up on them and using them as guidelines for your actions throughout the year throughout the month and throughout the week and then daily and breaking it down like that we're going to talk about how to set your intention for the year your goals, how to turn them into reality with consistency and accountability. And then I'm going to go over some tools, tips, and tricks that I've picked up over the years of doing this practice. Linked down below will be a goal guide from ReSelf as a companion to this episode that you can use to guide your work. You can even do it, print it out and fill it out there. I will just say all of my work in this context has always been done, written out by hand in journals. I think that there's so much to say for that. It is incredible to have amassed the amount of work the amount of writing that I have over these years. And that is, I think, the number one way to measure your growth, your personal growth, identity, growth, all of these different things, your thoughts. Um, it's incredible. Over the past almost week now, I've been reading through my journals from 2020. And it's incredible. It is literally incredible to read my thoughts, my, you know, how I was working through things that were going through my life in January of 2020 and to witness again, but from an observational objective view, those same experiences. And it truly just grasps how much we grow and puts it into perspective. So that'll be my little, my little uh, plug for writing, writing things down by hand. So let's get right into it, huh? 
Number one, set your intention. When we set an intention for 2021, this is your guiding idea or word, so to speak, for the new year. So close your eyes, be still, and just ask yourself, what do I want? in this new year what is my intention and wait for it to arise from your gut your mind will probably throw out some words some ideas some common resolutions or whatever but if you just remain still and wait for it something will come up just a word maybe even a picture but an intention will arise that comes from deep within you asking you to hear it and to honor it and to let it guide you for the new year what is my intention So once that comes up, write it down. This word will keep you close to what you want for the year throughout it. It will guide you. It will guide your actions. It will guide your free time. It It will be a guiding force. And then we're going to write down what we need to do to embody this intention. What behaviors, what actions, what thoughts, what do we do to embody this intention? Then, with your intention in mind, write down how you envision 2021. So if your intention is clearing, I intend to clear out all in my life that doesn't serve me. So I envision having friends that align with my values, that add to my life and don't just take, and I envision those people in my life that do not align with who I am becoming to just melt away. That's just an example. And uh, when you're working on that, how you envision that intention manifesting in the new year, obviously it will be in multiple facets in your life, all the different aspects of your life. After that, this is always, I think, the fun part. (laughs) You perhaps might disagree right now. I guarantee you if you do this and you stick with it at the end of 2021, you will not disagree. We're going to write down our 21 goals that will help us to embody our intention and turn our vision into reality. When you're writing these goals, make the first six the most important to you. And be specific. The more specific, the better. If you're being specific, 21 goals will not be difficult. You will churn these out, I promise. And don't forget to be compassionate with yourself and set goals that are in aligned with who you want to become and how you envision your life. But be compassionate and be reasonable. Focus on tangible actions and feelings to qualify your goal. And again, make sure your goals cover all aspects of yourself in your life, your relationships, your purpose, your growth, your soul, your health, your experiences, your home, abundance. What do you want to be a part of your life in 2021? What do you want to leave behind in 2020? What do you need to heal in 2021? What do you need to take responsibility for? 
What do you need to prioritize to nourish your mind, body, and soul? What boundaries do you need to create in order to honor your well-being? Just let whatever flows flow. You have 21 spaces. And then we are going to go on our phone, go on our computer, whatever we need to do right now. And we're going to set a reminder for the last weekend of every month to review the month and set your intention for the coming month, your goals, and your actions to achieve them. When doing this, obviously, you will be looking back to your 21 goals and figuring out, again, how to break those down into monthly actions and goals that will compound to create your achievement of that larger year goal. And then we're going to create a plan for the goals you've listed in your 21 goals. To do that, we're going to write an action item for each and set a deadline to hold yourself accountable. For example, in order to goal, insert your goal here, I will do blank, 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 put your actions there, and then say when you will do it. So for example, if my goal is I want to read more, in order to read more, I will get a book and read every night before I fall asleep. Do that for all of the goals that you have written down in your 21 goals. And some of them might not be as tangible to break down, but see what you can do and really try to do it for all of them. You can even do this as you write down your 21 goals. But I find that to keep the 21 goals broad and, again, just tangible actions and feelings, and then really break that down from there into a action statement that creates a plan for those is very helpful. And then, again, that guides your when you're setting your intentions for the month and reviewing your month, it it really helps. Then we are going to set our why. Why these goals? Why this year? Why no more excuses? Why you will stay committed? Why you can make this all happen and more? Why are these the stepping stones to the goals and vision you hold for your life? Set your why. We can all fall down, fall off our goals, get out of alignment, fall out of our routine. This is, that's life. That happens. But when we stay as close to why we're doing this and we have, we have a written statement why we're doing these goals, why it's this year and not next year, why it's me, why it's now, why I will stay committed. It is just so much easier to hold ourselves accountable because it is literally our own voice written down, our own almost need to achieve, knowing we can achieve. Number five, it's time to reself, reset yourself. It all comes down to you. We play the ultimate role in making our goals our reality. We're the determining factor. Define who you want to become. Who is your future self at the end of 2021? What are their habits? What are their traits? What do they value? What is their mindset? What are their hobbies? How do they use their time? How do they treat people? All of those different things. Write them down. You can even draw a little diagram if that's easier. Whatever you need to do to visualize it and conceptualize your future self at the end of 2021. Again, the more specific, the better. Number six, we're going to write down what we need to let go of, release and shift within ourself today to become our future self. What limiting beliefs, what doubts, what fears, what habits are we holding on to that are holding us back? Write those down. 
And then we're going to write down what affirmations can you repeat daily to tap into your future self. An example of this is if I say my future self is responsible and does things on time, my affirmation would perhaps be, I am responsible, I manage my time well, and I prioritize what needs to be done today to get me where I need to be. I really enjoy writing affirmations from my heart for myself, but I also love to look up affirmations on Pinterest. A great quote about affirmations, if you're not familiar with the idea of affirmations, it's the repetition of affirmations that leads to belief. And once that belief becomes a deep conviction, things begin to happen. Muhammad Ali. Affirmations are really powerful. I say affirmations every morning. It's the second thing I do when I wake up in the morning, which brings us to, I believe, number seven, which is reself routines. Establishing a morning and evening routine that nurtures your mind, body, and soul for your well being and your embodiment of your future self today. We're going to design our morning and evening routine. The morning and the evening is your sacred time to retreat and reconnect with yourself, rebalance, recharge, and reflect. To get ready for tomorrow, to get yourself ready to make tomorrow even better, to really just reconnect. And it doesn't have to be, you know, oh, every night I'm going to reread my goals. And that can totally be what you do. And if that's going to help you stay on track and stay accountable, by all means, do that. It could be reading a book about something that has to do with, you know, who you're becoming. Whatever gets you there, you know what I mean? You, you want to make this the most valid and valuable use of your time to really help you get to where you're going, where you're meant to be going. And for this reason, I highly recommend you exclude your cell phone from these times. When we wake up and we immediately check our phone, we are checking in with the world, with everyone else, before we check in with ourselves. That is a habit that will not serve us if we're trying to focus on ourselves and really let ourselves blossom into who we're meant to be. How can we do that if we're checking in with other people first? And it's the same thing before going to bed. So I thought I'd share my morning routine as an example of what a morning routine could look like. Again, my morning routine does not include my phone. I have an alarm clock for my alarm. If you need an alarm, set your alarm and put your phone in a bathroom. Put it in the hallway. Just keep it out of your room so you're not tempted and it's not disrupting you. And then in the morning when it rings, you got to get up and go get it. There's no dilly-dallying in bed. I wake up and I read an excerpt from Your True Home. By Thich Nhat Hanh. Then I say my affirmations. I keep a list of them and I typically address them each month in the beginning of the month to represent what I want to bring in for the next month and, you know, just really reflect where I'm at. I repeat them every morning until I feel it embodied as a, a belief, as a, a conviction, like Muhammad Ali was talking about. After I'm done, I sit for meditation. I do a variation of different meditations. I always do one that feels right for me in that day. It could be a simple breathing meditation, breath work, visual meditation, whatever I'm feeling that day. And I do this all before leaving my room so that I'm not disturbed by anyone else influenced by anyone else's energy or mindset I'm really taking that time and it's only about half an hour I'm taking that time to check in with myself oh 
I missed a really important part. Immediately when my eyes flutter open, I say in my head, I express my gratitude for waking up this morning. That's something that I started doing in the past year. And it is an incredible perspective to remind ourselves every morning. We take for granted our lives so easily. Perhaps you can relate to this too. When I was a child, I used to wake up every morning and I used to be so excited for the day, what was coming, what the day held. I just was so excited. And one of my bigger goals for this year was to tap back into that energy. And part of that is, and it's an incredible feeling when you start to feel like, oh gee, I'm excited for today. I've woken up and wow, I can't wait to see what's going to come and today's going to be a great day because I'm going to make it a great day. And that doesn't mean it has to be this huge, you know, extravagant, great day, whatever that means. It could be the littlest things, but I'm going to make it the best day. And tomorrow I'm going to make it the best day. And by the way, I am so grateful to be alive. I'm so grateful to have woken up and to have this gift of yet another day. Our lives don't need to be perfect for us to say that, which I think is something that we learn with affirmations. Repeating that affirmation again, it helps us believe that and helps us remember, wow, life is really a miracle. And it's really a miracle that I woke up today because no one told me I was going to wake up today. There was no guarantee I would continue to live. And I think that, for me, has been an incredibly powerful perspective to remind myself every time I wake up in the morning. Again, I'll say with both routines, excuses have no home here. For real. We're not, we're not doing excuses anymore, right? When you design your routine, you've designed it and you think, wow, I can't, I don't have time for this. I have to get up and go to work. I have to go to school. Like, I don't, I don't have time for this. Wake up earlier. Go to bed earlier. What, what are you doing at night that's keeping you up so late? Are you watching Netflix? Perhaps that's not the best use of your time. And trust me, I learned this. I learned this myself and I had to be that balancing logic I had to say you know like if you're staying up till 1 2 3 a.m and it's because you know I'm doing things that are not serving me then I can better use my time because then in the morning I will wake up earlier and I will have more of the day ahead of me I will have a better mindset to do my routine and to really embody my intention and to achieve my goals so (laughs) tangent and uh i let my dog out i connect with nature and i drink my lemon water and i set my intention for the day the same way i set my intention for the year i close my eyes i ask myself what do i want from today what is my intention for today how do i want to move through today and i wait for something to come up then I make it a priority to do some form of exercise and again I've made time to do all those things before I actually have my first obligation of the day and then at night it's the same kind of idea I do my gratitude I write down two things that happen throughout the day that I am grateful for Again, this is an incredible practice that when we practice gratitude, gratitude spawns more gratitude. And I have been doing this practice for over a year now, obviously. And like, it's weird to talk about it as a practice because it's something that we think like should be just, you know, ingrained in us. Like, please, thank you. I'm so grateful. But to really like intentionally do it is a whole other thing and one of the things you know whenever I've spoken and reconnected with friends throughout this year especially during COVID 
I'm just so grateful. Like I have been so flooded with gratitude. And it again, it doesn't mean my life is perfect, but we have so much to be grateful for. And when we focus on that, it grows and expands. So I practice my grat I, I write down my two gratitudes every night. I do my skincare, I brush my teeth, I get in bed, I read, I write, I do a meditation, whatever I need to do. And as I drift to sleep, I reflect on the day. It's really intuitive, but the whole thing is that it's coming to me and I've made the space and I'm still and I'm silent enough to let whatever needs to happen happen and I think that's part of the whole thing about not having your phone around not having your computer around the tv on whatever it's it's making deliberate time each morning and each evening to connect with yourself to reflect and to recharge we're almost done hang in there then from there we are going to write down our habits again i there's a lot out there about habits but you know there's an aristotle quote we are what we repeatedly do excellence then is not an act but a habit and habits are just compound actions and they compound into who we are and what we do so breaking down our actions on a daily and weekly basis that will nurture ourselves in our growth is essential. So write down the things that you want to do every day that will nurture yourself in your growth and then every week. It can be once a week, twice a week, whatever. Maybe daily. My daily habit is gratitude. I want to write two things down every day that I'm grateful for. And a weekly habit is I want to paint. I want to make sure I'm painting once a week or, you know, whatever. I want to read once a week, whatever it is. I think a really important thing that I learned from a great book, I'll link it in the show notes, a book called Atomic Habits is... When we're framing our habits and we're talking about a habit that we want to break, it's effective to replace it with a new one and an action. For example, maybe my daily habit is spend less time on social media. Okay, well, let's reframe that. I want to spend more time walking in nature and reading. So to get that more time, I will spend less time on social media. I am setting a 30-minute limit per day using my settings, which everyone has in their phone settings. Or I believe even on the Instagram app, but I'm not sure. Don't quote me. So again, that's where responsibility and accountability comes in, right? You know, if I want to spend less time on social media, you know, it's not just enough to say I want to spend less time on social media. I need an action. I need a plan for how I'm going to do that. Because when push comes to shove, that that habit of repetition will kick in. And there goes an hour of your day, of your precious time. Set that limit. Be that accountable force for yourself. Be that responsible figure for yourself. That is so much about daily habits and practices and keeping promises to ourselves is showing ourselves that we can be responsible and we can do what it is that we're setting out to do. And then finally, here we are at the end. Reself beyond self. Be the change you wish to see in the world. Every action we take, we talked about this in our previous episode, on the lessons from 2020. Every action we take, every dollar we spend is a vote for or against a better future for ourselves, our environment, and our fellow human beings. Part of well-being is being a decent human towards all those we cross paths with, from smiling at strangers to educating yourself on injustices and volunteering. 
Write down five actions that you will take in 2021 to contribute to a better world. Again, it can be, I'm going to smile at strangers. I'm going to make it a must for me that whenever I go into a store, I'm going to be as nice as I possibly can to the person who is helping me out. I'm going to show them my appreciation and my gratitude. I'm going to put a smile on their face. I'm going to wish them well. Or it can be, again, educating yourself on injustices, tapping into resources, learning. Or it could be when I buy my clothing, I am going to buy secondhand on the countless numbers of online platforms that there are and in-person stores versus Fashion Nova, Urban Outfitters, Misguided, ASOS, Amazon, all of these big name, possibly even more convenient fast fashion stores. I'm going to make it a goal to do that and I'm going to make it a goal to circulate the clothing I no longer use. I'll sell it. I'll give it away. So what again, whatever it is for you, but write down those five things that you're going to do to contribute to a better world. And there we are. Now you have your blueprints for 2021. You'll be able to use these when you write your monthly intention and goals, when you reflect on your month, when you set your weekly goals. Some tips and tricks, eh? Again, the more specific you are in all this, the better. Practicing daily gratitude is a life-changing thing, I have to say, from my own experience. Again, it can be as simple as writing down two things each day that you're grateful for in your journal or buying a gratitude journal. One I will recommend and link down below is the five minute journal by Intelligent Change, which brings us to keeping a journal. I know I keep saying I'm going to make a podcast episode on this and I promise that I will, but As I said in the beginning of this episode, keeping a journal is a game changer and using a structured journal, I believe, is the same thing. So last year, I used the Artist of Life journal from Lavender. I will link it in the show notes again. This was a game changer, an absolute game changer. It kept me beyond writing my, you know, 20 goals. It helped me break it down and quantify it into so much more. And certainly the Reself Goals Guide was uh, influenced by Eileen's work in creating that workbook because it was so influential to me. Again, uh, I will link this. The Best Year Journal from Intelligent Change, the same company that does the five-minute journal, I would uh, recommend. I've never used it, but I looked through it, and it seems very similar to Eileen's Artist of Life journal. Uh, But I will say for 2021, I got Eileen's Artist of Life journal again, She made some really incredible changes to it, additions to it, and, you know, I'm all about supporting uh, the entrepreneur. If you can't go out and buy one of these, just create it yourself. Like, get yourself a blank notebook or even literally just staple a bunch of paper together. Follow along from what you can find on the internet. When I was playing with different morning exercises I followed the page from the five minute journal be resourceful be you know thrifty Uh, you can definitely put something together on your own as well so you don't have to go out and buy something definitely the last tip um, that again was a game changer 
this year was setting weekly goals. You can find it on the Reself Instagram, which will be linked down below. A weekly check-in and even a midweek check-in. How am I doing? What's my intention for this week? What do I want to feel this week? How am I going to do this? What do I want to do more of? What do I want to do less of? You can find that on our Instagram. And again, this was a huge game changer because prior to doing weekly check-ins, I would set monthly goals, but I wasn't checking in with them each week. And I wasn't breaking it down to that final step that is, what am I doing this week to get me closer to those monthly goals, to get me closer to those year goals? that get me closer to my life goals and my life vision. Because when you hold this bigger vision, whether it's your life vision, your year vision, your month vision, unless you break it down that next step that is, what am I doing this week to get there? That's when you can break it down to, what do I need to do today to get there? What am I doing that is keeping me from getting there? Game changer. And uh, just, you know, some final thoughts I want to share on this subject. This is coming from me and my personal experience with this. There's a difference between self-mastery and being your own internal dictator. We don't want to cultivate a dictator in your head. You want to be flexible in your methods, but firm in your goals and your time usage. Self-mastery is the ability to control one's own desires or impulses. It's how we keep our daily promises to ourselves, an essential factor. It's choosing long-term gratification over immediate gratification, a concept and conversation for another time, but something I certainly have learned in the past two years Delayed gratification is immensely more worthwhile than immediate gratification. And we don't talk about that enough. And we are certainly not taught it through technology, social media, and all the cultural influences that we have today. A note on reflection. Reflection is a gift to yourself. To write in a journal and be able to review all that you've covered in the prior year, all that you've, you know, thought about, was, were inspired by, your ideas, your growth, it's powerful. It's really powerful at the end of the year to go back and see how you achieved all of your goals and what worked and what didn't work and, you know, what were you stuck on? Where did you fall off? All these different things. It's just feedback and to be able to objectively observe all of it is incredible. And I promise you, you will be pleasantly surprised at how much you achieve and you'll realize just how much you overlook without doing this practice. Use your time wisely We don't talk about this enough again, but time is your greatest asset. You You will will never get back the time you spend, so spend it wisely on what feeds your soul, your growth, and inspires you. Like we talked about earlier, if you don't like the page of the story you're on, you have the power to turn the page or read a whole new story entirely. You decide, you choose. No one else is going to do it for you. It all comes down to you and your actions. That might be a very overwhelming thing, but it is the most empowering thing as well. Explore yourself. Explore the world around you. Be curious. Think deeply. Question everything. Dare to be different. Dare to be yourself. Everything you need is within you. It's your job to find your gift and your purpose to give it away. Feel the fear and do it anyway. If not you, who? If not now, when? I wish you all the best in this new year, in this next chapter of your life, as you create and become 
all that you wish and intend to embody. You have the power. You can do it. You can surprise yourself. Stay on the path and be still enough and silent enough and give yourself enough space to live and breathe and thrive and reflect and grow. You can download our goals guide below. There will be a link and an incredibly exciting announcement. The Reself beta test will be beginning in a little over a month. So you can go on to the Reself website and sign up to be notified about our beta test to be a participant. That will be an incredible gift to yourself to dive into these philosophies and practices and concepts and will be an important part in achieving your new year's goals so you're going to want to sign up for that the link will be down below i will continue to share more information as january goes on and we get closer to the beta test but for now you can sign up on our website to be notified first, follow Reself on Instagram, Tumblr, Pinterest, all that good stuff down below. Happy New Year. This is your year. You can do it. You can do anything. Anything. Be good. Be healthy. Be merry. Be the bright brilliant light that you were born to be and help yourself live the life that you were born to live thank you everybody i'm so excited for this new year i'm so excited to continue this conversation bye everybody